Hey guys, this is Savannah from earthandwater.co. Today I want to talk about enchanting objects. It's so funny that some people are going to find this topic controversial. Like, clutch your pearls. Savannah's talking about witchcraft again. So, enchanting objects is something that I have done since I was itty bitty, okay? I was a kid walking around with bracelets and necklaces that I pretended had magical powers. And then I became an adult and I started learning about energy and it turns out there's actually a little something behind this. And of course, it's spicy psychology. Does the object actually have magical powers? Well, that depends up to you, doesn't it? If you believe it does, then it does. You can absolutely take a bracelet or any piece of jewelry, any crystal, anything, any object whatsoever, and play pretend that it gives you more confidence. And then if you carry it around with you, every time you look at it, notice it, feel it in your pocket, you know, whatever it is, it's going to give you that subconscious and conscious little boost of reminderness to, hey, be a little bit more confident. So that's essentially all it is. You, you choose an object, decide what attribute you're going to give that object. You know, it can be confidence, it can be peace, it can be happiness, it can be contentment, gratitude, whatever, whatever. And then essentially you're just play pretending. You, you just decide that it has those powers and then you hold it with you and then it's, it's a constant reminder to focus on and cultivate those energies, those emotions. The true power it holds is within you and your psyche. It's a tool to help us remember to focus on the things that we would like to focus on. You know, we're controlling our mind again. We're controlling our emotions. We're learning. We're practicing meditation, essentially. Mindfulness and intentional living. You know, we can allow our emotions and thoughts to run around like crazy, but they more often than not naturally go towards not helpful things simply because we're programmed to always be anticipatory towards things that could possibly go wrong our minds are always preparing they're always on alert especially in the world that we live in these days but the untrained mind is going to do what it does it's going to run around like crazy it's going to be anxious and overwhelmed and noticing all of the things that could possibly be wrong and worrying about this or that and it's going to throw in some insecurities in there and it's going to throw in some some negative self-talk and it's going to start blaming you and you know like it can gosh gosh we need a meditation mindfulness practices are meant to dial it back a little bit you know come back come back too heavy in the yang energy the go 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 the rush 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 not enough in the yin the slow down the just be here and exist for a moment Finding an object that you would like to enchant, essentially, with, you know, calmness, patience, gratitude, whatever, whatever, is going to help you focus your mind towards those things. It's just a fun reminder. I love to do this with my children. You can make a whole thing of it, a whole ritual. It's, it's whatever you want to make of it. You can totally just grab something and be like, you, my friend, my bracelet, my ring, whatever are going to you I bestow upon thou the gift of confidence which will then radiate to everyone who touches thee or you can do a whole thing where you smudge it and you place it in the center of a crystal grid and you yada yada all over it whatever you know literally whatever it can be whatever you want to give it to but the more emphasis that you put on it, the bigger of an ordeal that you make it, the more power it's going to hold in your subconscious mind. Which means the less work you have to do up front. See, the subconscious is a powerful tool and partner that you can utilize if you can know how to program it properly. And in this particular situation, if the bigger the ritual around the object, then the, le the more your subconscious is going to grab hold of it. And then you don't have to think about it too much. You just put it on and then your subconscious is like, ah, confidence. Yeah, that, that means confidence. We're going to keep on going. 
Whereas if you're like, yeah, whatever about it, um, on one hand it's fine, but on the other hand, you're if you're like if your conscious upfront mind is like whatever, yeah, sure, here's a thing. I'm going to say that it has the power of confidence. Yeah, woo, and then go on about your day. Then your subconscious is going to feel the exact same way about that, and then just it's not going to care. Which means you're going to have to put forth more em- more effort and energy. Uh, in the forefront to actually consciously recognize the object, uh, remember that it is tied to confidence, and then adjust yourself to like, oh, I need to get more confidence, right? It, it's it's the difference between actively working on it and then it being a quote-unquote magical object, right? If you've read Harry Potter or, you know, watched the movies or anything magical, if you're into that, and they have a talisman, they don't have to beg the talisman to work, right? It just works because it's magic. And it's the same thing here. You want to give it the energy and power to just work, which means really putting your energy into it, really like giving it the importance as if it were a real talisman. But you have to believe in it and want to believe in it and that it's going to work for it to actually work. If you're like, oh, this is hogwash, but I'll try it out, then, well, I mean, it's not going to work because you've already assigned it as hogwash in your head, in your subconscious mind. The mind is going to believe whatever you want it to believe. So if you tell it that it's real, it's going to be like, okay, it's real. Just like if you give a child a bracelet and you're like, okay, say you have a kid that's afraid to go upstairs to their bedroom by themselves. And you give them a bracelet and you're like, here you go, this bracelet is going to protect you from anything bad that could possibly ever happen. Then they're going to, well, maybe they might believe you. (laughs) It really depends on the kid. But if you can convince them that it is a thing and it is real, then that kid's probably going to go upstairs and come back down and be like, I wasn't afraid. You were right. It worked, you know, and it's the same thing. It's just fun psychology, you know? Why not believe in magic? It's our choice, and it makes life more fun and more enjoyable, more sparkly. On the other hand, we could get into Reiki and how Reiki practitioners literally infuse objects with energy, which is literally the exact same thing I'm talking about here. It doesn't really matter how you choose to believe that the object actually has these powers or not. What matters is that you convince yourself that they do. Whether that's a literal form of actually being infused with energy, or it's more on the spicy psychology level of things, where you're like, I understand that this doesn't actually have powers, it's just a symbol that's helping me remember to be more confident, or be more patient, or whatever, whatever. It does not matter. The, well, the only thing that matters is that you are putting things in practice that are helping you become who you want to be. Things that are helping you become more patient, more confident, calm, compassionate, loving, peaceful, understanding. The, the, it goes on forever. Less fearful, less anxious. Whatever it is that you are working on specifically, this is just another tool to help remind you of it. To help you get there. And it's a really fun one that helps a lot if you are dealing with children a lot. My son is terrified of everything, so I'm always enchanting objects for him to, like, for protection or confidence or safety or whatever. You know, sometimes we need that little boost outside of ourselves that help us get to where we need to be, where we want to be. So yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, Don't burn me at the stake. Let me know if you have any questions or if I can point you towards anything. I'd love to hear your opinions about this. Come join us in the Facebook group. Um, You know, we got things. In the meantime, take a deep breath. Relax your face and shoulders. You're doing a great job. Hang out and just exist for a little bit with some music. Let's go with 69.3 hertz for this episode which helps us enhance what we want to manifest. So spend these next few minutes thinking about what you want your life to be like. Who do you want to be? What does that person look like? What is that person's ideal day? What do they do? How do they dress? What do they, how do they speak? What kind of emotions and vibrations are that, does that person have? How can you begin to close the gap between who you are and where you want to be?
remember, things don't happen in grand flip of the coin moments, okay? They happen very gradually, very small, little by little, every day with the choices that we make when we encounter people and things and opportunities and circumstances and situations. Making a little bit better decisions every time we can, which means being consciously aware and present in, our, in the moment all the time so that we can recognize when these things come up and that we can flip it over and make a better decision than we probably would have prior. So yeah, let me know if I can be of assistance. Until next week, namaste. I love you guys.